In this video, I'll be showing you how to brute force website passwords with Z Attack Proxy. Let's get right into this. The website we'll be using for this test is Autoro Mutual. This is a demo website. This is not a real web application. And you shouldn't be using real sites for your test. You should only test sites you have clear written permission to test. So take clear note of that. And you can access this test site from demo.testfire.net. So I'm going to copy this and I'll go to Manual Explore in Zap. If you don't know how to install Zap, I'll leave a link in the description below. And let's launch our browser here. So I'll paste this here. And once we load this, we'll see our requests loading up in the history tab here and we can see our login page here if we click on request and this is the response this is the html response we get for this page so i already know a user for this account i know a user with the username admin exists but i don't know the password so if you type in admin and one two three four five for example as the password and click login we get this error here login field and if we go to our history tab in zap we can trace that here by the request timestamp and we can see that particular request here so if you don't want to trace things in the history tab you can turn on breakpoints in zap and just make the request again so I'll try admin one two three four five login but this won't load because we turned on our breakpoints in Zap. And you can see the request here. And we have to click play or submit for this to move on. So that can be an alternate way for you to track your request step by step instead of tracing them in the history. So we have our request here. Let's go to the request tab again. And I'll just click, double click on the password field. That's the value of the password field. And right click on this and click on false. So a brute force attack is a type of attack where you try to guess the password for a user by trying out multiple passwords. They can be um, sequential passwords or they can be a list of known passwords in a particular file. So that type of brute force attack is called a dictionary attack where you use a list of known passwords so that's what we're going to be doing so we'll make sure we have this highlighted then i'll click on payloads and i'm going to add a payload so on that type of payload you want to use file for us so zap comes loaded with various word lists you can use for different things and i'll scroll down here and choose the word list for user and password i'm going to go to passwords and i'll click join this first one so we'll use this simple word list to test things out so i'll add this and click on ok so you have more options here but we'll focus on the basic options for now so i'll start forza and this will start trying out multiple payloads so this will start trying out multiple passwords on the website and try to find the correct password So our forcing is complete and how do we know our password? So there are different ways you can know your password with Zap. You can sort these different tabs out to try to figure out what the actual password is. So what I usually look at is the code, the response code, the response header and the response body size. So what you want to check out for are anomalies. You remember when we made our request, we had this login field message. So there is a high chance that every field login will have the same message. So the properties of that particular page or that response will probably be the same thing. So let's filter by code. And we can see we have all the same code here. And the next thing we want to filter by is the response size, the response header size. So let's filter in ascending order. We can see a lot of this. Almost everything is 126 bytes. I'll filter in descending order and we can see we have one that is 261 bytes. So we have an anomaly here. We have some that are 
145 bytes and this might be interesting to look at but this is one anomaly and this is the most interesting so let's filter by response body size so for the response body size everything is zero bytes so the only anomaly i'm seeing here is with the response header size and this 261 bytes looks interesting the payload for this is admin and that might be our password so let's try this out username admin and password admin so this worked and we've been able to log in as admin on this test site so that's how to force passwords in zap that's how to perform a brute force or a dictionary attack just remember when you perform your force you want to look out for anomalies and the one that stands out is most likely to be your password so yeah that will be all for this video i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you learned something new from this if you did don't forget to like comment share and subscribe if you have any questions about this leave them in the comments below and i'll see you in the next video